Okay. Uh, so could somebody lead in prayer? Uh, Aradhana, are you are you okay? Comfortable to lead in prayer? Okay. Uh, maybe not uh, Lubega. Okay, just wanted uh, someone else to lead in prayer. Uh, uh, let's pray. Okay, sure. Okay, John, go ahead. Yeah. Father, we want to thank you for this morning. Lord, we submit us to your hands, oh God. As a class, we come before your presence. We pray, oh God, that you would speak to us today. Help us to understand your word. Help us to walk in the authority that you have called us for. We uh, submit us, Nancy, also to your hands, oh God. We pray that... She'd be able to deliver your word in its fullness, Lord Jesus. We thank you. Bless each one of us, God. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, John. Um, okay. All right. So, Lubega is traveling. That's all right, uh, Lubega. Um, so, in the last class, we talked about uh, the complete victory that the Lord Jesus has won for us on the cross of Calvary. We saw how uh, he has defeated, not just defeated, we saw how he has crushed, expelled, condemned, disarmed, destroyed, and made Satan powerless. So we have this complete understanding that our enemy is a defeated foe. Is he still in battle with us? Yes, because his time on the earth is not yet over. So he will continue to target, continue to uh, plot, scheme and cause attacks against mankind in general uh, and particularly God's people or the believers. So he will do that. He will not stop doing it. Later on in one of our upcoming chapters, we will see that now that he is completely defeated, he is all the more eager to cause destruction and damage to God's people. So he, in that sense, uh, ready to attack. But the truth that every believer needs to settle in our hearts is that the Lord Jesus has won the victory over Satan. And I have been telling us right from the start, you know, when you, uh, there is no comparison of our almighty God and Satan in the first place, because God is uh, an eternal spirit. He does not have a beginning. He does not have an end. He's the alpha and the omega. He is the creator. He is all powerful. Okay, uh, so this is our understanding of God. He is all knowing. He is ever present. He is present in all places at all times. So he's an omniscient, omnipotent, uh, omnipresent God. And these are terms that we only assign to deity or God. And when you consider Satan. We have talked about the origin of Satan, that he was but an angel of God, created with utmost beauty, wisdom, um, uh, anointing, and you know, gifts, blessings, uh, that God created him to be a worshipper. And we know that pride was something that uh, Lucifer gave place to, and uh, that pride left led to deception and that is the reason there was a war in heaven and uh, he was thrown out of heaven he was cast down and he took with him one-thirds of the angels of heaven who uh, function as those disembodied spirits or demons that we also talked about so he has a kingdom with some structure uh, which is opposing the kingdom of god but you see here that Satan is but a created being. Okay, so there is no comparison to who God really is. And in 
addition to all of that, the Lord Jesus has defeated Satan. No, first of all, he uh, was, was never a match for God. Now, in addition to that, the Lord Jesus has redeemed us and defeated the devil all over again through the cross of Calvary. And thereby, when you think about the devil, yes, there is a real threat. I'm not saying that's why Paul wrote to us uh, and he said, you know, don't be ignorant of the schemes of the devil. That's what Paul told us. So we are not supposed to uh, deny. deny. <coughs> Sometimes that is the problem with believers, that we deny the existence of a devil or we deny the existence of an enemy. <coughs> Excuse me. So it is equally, uh, you know, uh, what would I say? The term would be uh, it's not beneficial for us to ignore the existence of the devil. We have to acknowledge that there is a devil, but we have to understand, you know, what is his capacity? What is his position? What is uh, uh, the uh, the uh, caliber of, of this enemy that we have? And because of the work of the Lord Jesus, you know, it must be very, very clear for all believers that the enemy is defeated. Okay. Uh, and so when we talk about Satan and his demons, uh, this very abnormal sense of fear that a lot of believers carry, um, you know, it's, it's not uh, well substantiated from scripture. Okay, So uh, we can be bold and we can uh, walk in victory. We can know that we are victorious and there is complete mastery. We have complete mastery over the enemy. We have dominion and authority over the enemy. We have protection from the enemy. We saw how uh, this concept of the enemy having legal rights over us. Okay? Uh, yes, if we give him, then he would have. But otherwise, you know, the Lord Jesus has already closed uh, every every door for us and therefore he, he does not have any legal rights the lord jesus has taken care of all those things for us and also you know fear of backlashes fear of as you grow in the lord or as you grow in the ministry having this fears a lot of people have fears they say uh, what if the enemy tries to target me or you know uh, keep me in bondage we must overcome these things. I remember, you know, once, I think it was the very first time that I, I didn't plan to cast out a demon, but I had just gone for prayer. Uh, those days, there were lots of students in, in uh, the congregation where I used to serve. So I used to visit them often and pray with them. So one such uh, student home that I went to, and they had a, a visitor. Like a, a new student had just come from their uh, country and joined them. So I had gone for prayer. But when I had gone for prayer, little did I know that, you know, there's one, uh, one student who started manifesting. And it was the scariest experience of my life because the manifestation was, uh, I mean, the person was behaving like a snake, you know, writhing on the floor and moving about. And all these other, there were not many students actually, only a few students were there. Uh, and everyone is looking up to me because I was the, uh, you know, at that time serving as a pastor in that local congregation, associate pastor, of course. Uh, so they were all looking at me like, okay, I think you have the solution. And there I was uh, really scared. I was like, okay, you know, I know that I have authority over Satan, but... Uh, uh, what's going on? You know, how how do I handle this? It's so disturbing uh, to see the way this particular student is behaving. But so thankfully, I knew something about the cross, and I knew something about 
you know our authority in Christ Jesus not fully though but yes I took authority and I you know prayed over that uh, girl and I cast out that demon and uh, the manifestation stopped uh, after after some time and you know there was a sense of calm but with this particular girl she was very very <coughs> bound she had also come for one of our youth camps and there again she started manifesting so you know there, there was a lot of work required uh, with that girl but <coughs> what I'm saying is like even as somebody who was serving God, I did not have full idea that I have mastery over the devil. And uh, and uh, after having prayed over that girl, I still remember I came back and I was so scared. I was so worried that now that I have cast out demons, you know, are they going to do something to me and my family? And I... Uh, I went back to you know our office on that day <clears throat> two pastors happened to be there in the office and I still remember I spoke to both of them and I told them this happened yesterday I went somewhere to pray and I cast out demons do you think these demons will be upset with me and they will do something against me they said no no please don't think like that uh, <clears throat> because we have the authority you know we have uh, the power over the enemy and they prayed for me because the challenge that I had was actually fear. Remember I said that no? Uh, the way Job said, whatever I feared Job 3.25 has come upon me. So when we fear that Satan will do something because I'm growing in the ministry I'm serving God Satan can use that thought to enter and that itself is an open door for him. But we must recognize that you know, there's always a threat from the enemy. That's nothing new. We will keep overcoming it, you know, and uh, also uh, uh, sort of avert that danger through our intercession uh, and, and all that. So we, we can pray protection over ourselves and we don't have to uh, function in fear. So I'm talking from a very practical aspect. As believers and ministers of God, we must overcome this fear of the devil be aware of the devil yes that is correct because paul said that be aware but be fearful what will he do what will he do uh, demons are like this their manifestation no please because if we have seen particularly in the last class you know we read verse by verse and we have meditated on those scriptures jesus has overcome jesus has defeated the enemy so we are victorious. Now, let's move on to the next uh, chapter here, which is about the basis for our authority and dominion as believers. Before that, let me just have a small pause in case you know you have a thought or a question or something regarding the previous uh, topic here about the Lord Jesus being victorious on the devil. Okay, so I'll just leave this time open few minutes oh hi pastor ah yes hi hi john uh, go ahead pastor just the last point we mentioned regarding uh you know ha having boldness uh while casting out demons or let's say um for example if a person is having doubt okay uh, my question is can the demon do something to them uh like like by casting out if the person is having fear i'm, I'm asking from the other side uh uh, can the demon do something to them? Yeah, okay. Good question, uh, John. When the person is having doubt. So, uh, I would say, John, that mm, uh, can the demon do something? The answer would be yes. Okay. What can the demon do? The demon, <clears throat> we will study about this later. Basically, they engage in mind games. So, the demon can start playing mind games with the person. Will the de demon really do something to hurt the individual? <clears throat> I think no. No. Because, you know, when one is a believer, we already have 
you know that that uh, protection and we already have uh, that confidence that we can carry now because i in somewhere a little bit you know i'm i'm ha- having these doubts it's possible that the enemy starts from mind games and he will you know try to up it and see how far he can go with that particular believer okay uh, but then again it all depends on the believer if the believer is walking right with god so he can overcome does it answer your question ah uh, yes pastor pastor the, the reason i'm asking yeah, this is yeah, yeah. Uh, you know in, in especially in kerala mm. uh, uh, in in pentecostal background they yeah. always uh, kind of teach i mean not everyone but some of them kind of teach like when you cast out demons you have to um uh, you have to protect your family with the blood of jesus uh-huh. and they will fight back uh, and things like that I, we know that it's not according to the scripture um let's um as we read in luke 19 right and yes. my question is um so if they have experienced and they are telling no and now people will tell they won't affect you and all but this is our experience and uh, and how do we correct them or how do we you know put uh, uh, you know make understand make them understand what uh, the importance of the truth okay okay yeah john i i know uh, where you're coming from so see it is established scripturally that we are protected uh, jesus has won uh, over the devil so we can we have the authority and he has given us the authority to cast out demons okay so that is very very clear now coming to the experience of people where they say that you know the demon uh, it it spoke back it said this it said that one is john as i told you whatever we fear now if this is what they are being told that uh, the enemy will do something then obviously they have that fear and the fear is an open door and that is why these experiences also happen okay so that is one point the second point we will come to that later that is known as the overcomers lifestyle okay so when i am engaging in deliverance ministry this is also very very key you know jesus he made the statement right uh the the like satan he has nothing in me he has nothing in me so when a believer has open doors of sin or it could be you know anything else that he is in agreement with with the devil so fear is another very important thing anxiety something you know he is in agreement with the lies of the devil through that also people have had bad experiences while casting out demons now based on these experiences they say no the devil can attack you but why did it happen there were open doors uh, john based on what they believed and so that is why they had those experiences it doesn't make sense what i'm telling you yes 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 pastor yeah so we don't deny that people have had these experiences that's simply because of open doors one is through fear or through something else that uh, they were in agreement with or sing like just the other day i was listening to uh, a sermon and uh, that pastor he talked about uh, how uh, he had gone with somebody to cast out a demon uh, at that time the other person was teaching this uh, pastor to cast out a demon so they both had gone and when they went there the demon spoke up and uh, said that uh, how dare you 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 cast me out you know uh, i know what you did yesterday <laughs> sort of a thing so apparently that mentor of of this pastor had done something which was not correct okay and the and the devil knew about it and uh, brought it up mind games okay mind games that's in it's in see he's not all knowing but he knows enough to pull you down now at that moment you know i'm just thinking so uh, this particular person was saying that uh, so you should not engage in uh deliverance uh if you are not perfect but see my point is of course we have to be perfect we need a an overcomer's lifestyle we should stay away from sin because even that passage that we read in uh you know first peter where we said that the enemy will not touch the enemy will not touch us 
that is for somebody who walks a righteous lifestyle you know when we when we deal with sin in our lives when we repent when we confess and we go to god we are in a place of protection and the enemy will not touch us okay so that is where it is applicable but if there are open doors that can be something satan will use demons can use but i'm also thinking now even if the enemy is playing mind games even in that very moment you know as a believer i could say okay lord you know i'm yeah okay if if there is an unconfessed sin in my life and that is um uh, diminishing or decreasing my authority i come before you lord you know i i surrender i repent before you it's not about being scared of the demon or being threatened by what the demon said you might just want to suspend that deliverance session and say okay brother i'll come back tomorrow you go back pray fast fall you know prostrate before the lord and ask for uh, uh, forgiveness sort it out and come back you can engage in in the ministry okay so uh, the point is see jesus has done it all and when we are walking in righteousness in alignment to um, the character of god satan will not have any uh, we in fact have mastery over the devil so don't get shaken up because demons have this uh, habit we'll we'll study later also they like to shake the boat little bit you know they will accuse they will taunt they will who are you how much do you know you know are you the are you the main person uh, bring the main per they love to do these things because they like mind games they will try to intimidate accuse us and we must be aware of it we must be like ah uh, okay bring it on i know where you're coming from uh, i know how to deal with this Okay. so john just to make it a little more practical so that when we encounter this no then uh, hopefully what we have learned in theory you will know how to use it in practice yeah yes first yeah thank you thank you so much okay yeah sure sure okay thanks john uh, uh lubega i saw your raised hand is that for a question or was that by mistake i don't see it anymore pastor Ah, yeah. uh i guess there is one time so many some years ago almost 20 years ago i was in church uh -huh. and uh, one one pastor was praying for for a demon possessed lady uh -huh. and the, the the lady started talking but she was a lady and the voice was for a male and mm -hmm. the, the it told the pastor before you 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 cast me out tell us where you were yesterday night at this time Yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah it was so terrible because yeah, the pastor yeah. started shying away and yes. it said I will continue talking if you don't move out of my face yeah, <laughs> the pastor yeah. the pastor yeah. ran away and yes. Uh, yes, yes. the lesson i learned uh all these years now is like if you are ready to pray for a demon possessed lady or somebody i think you should confess all your sins before uh and ask for forgiveness and guidance before you attack the devil because he's great as you've said with mind games is excellent yeah 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 thank very you, true pastor. yeah thank you lubega thank you for sharing that uh, with us uh and so that's the reason you know we need to also maintain a lifestyle of uh, purity uh and do not be intimidated some like what lubega shared and what i shared of course those people were guilty of doing those things uh now the demon can say a lie also maybe maybe there's nothing wrong but the demon might want to make it look like you are wrong in front of others so main thing is don't get scared okay don't like as long as you know okay i have gone before the lord i have done my best to confess everything that i know and i'm trying to live a righteous life you know the way jesus said satan has nothing in me so as long as you can say that and you're going out there to cast the devil for some time he'll play all these games don't back off be strong keep using your authority okay keep using your authority sooner or later the demon has to come out 
okay so yeah just an encouragement there um, in practice and uh, just because satan plays these mind games the other thing that happens to believers is everyone gets very scared and they don't even want to take that uh, leap of faith they say well, what if what if he say demon say something so you know it we should go to that extreme also in fact we we can be prepared oh, there can be mind games here you know there can be manifestations here so but i'm not getting distracted okay so that is a key thing distract distract this person who's standing in front of you don't get distracted no so in those moments uh, we'll see in the there is one full chapter on steps of deliverance what we encourage is uh, you could just begin to speak the truth of god's word and say you know satan jesus has defeated you on the cross 2000 years ago whatever i said you know you have been defeated you have been expelled you have been condemned you have been destroyed the blood of jesus you know protects me i have been forgiven so you start speaking the truth if he is speaking the lies you start speaking the truth okay he can't take the truth and sooner or later uh, you will see that you know that that battle comes to an end with the victory of the cross okay so yeah so that's how we do that in practice okay if there are no more questions we will move on here to the next topic here which is on the authority and the dominion of the believer so the first basis on which we have uh, authority and dominion would be through redemption okay through redemption so we have what we call as redemptive authority we will also study a few more uh, aspects for the basis for our authority uh, but you know one by one which would be inherited authority positional authority delegated authority okay uh, so these are all reasons why we have authority so we'll look at it in depth so the first one redemptive authority this authority we have because the lord jesus became the sacrifice uh, and the one who shed his blood for our redemption so what is redemption redemption is uh, to buy back usually from bondage or slavery many of our nations uh, the you know the participants on this class you would relate to this you know we've had freedom struggles and people have paid a price to see the nation you know come back under their own people you know from let, let's say there was a a foreign rule over uh, you know many many of the nations but there was a struggle and there was a price which was paid for freedom okay so that is the idea of redemption now when we look at what the lord jesus has done he paid for our earthly as well as our eternal freedom redemption through his own body revelation 12 11 it says and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they did not love their lives to death so as a sign of that redemption as an act of that redemption uh, where the lord jesus hung on the cross and he died a very painful death for us there was also the shedding of the blood of jesus now if we look at the old covenant and the old testament practices we see that god had instituted excuse me the shedding of blood if you go back to the book of leviticus you know it it says that uh, the shedding of blood is necessary you know for the atoning of sins atoning is to cover to cover sin so the shedding of blood is very very important so the old covenant people under the old covenant they practiced this you know they uh, used to take animals 
and uh, those pure animals there was a entire criteria of what kind of animals should be sacrificed so they would be taken and their blood would be shared for the price for sin to be paid and that is how through the shedding of blood you know throughout the that entire time when uh, uh, you know after after uh, these laws were set for the children of israel they practiced it until the lord jesus came as that perfect and complete sacrifice so the book of hebrews talks about it that once and for all you know he became that sacrifice for us and now that the lord jesus has paid the price by the shedding of his own blood you know the blood of the lamb what lamb are we talking about the lord jesus is that perfect lamb of god you know john the baptist said behold the lamb of god who takes away the sins of the world so jesus has become that lamb for us and his blood has been shed now the blood of the lamb speaks of what our redemption the shed blood of the lamb talks about my freedom from sin from satan from sickness from oppression from the works that the enemy is doing in circumstances situations when i talk about the blood of jesus you know the enemy has to tremble reason is the blood is the symbol or the sign of my redemption so that is why here in this scripture revelation 12 11 it says they overcame by the blood of his blood of the lamb or the understanding of what the blood of jesus has done for us so when i recognize that oh the blood of jesus uh, has set me free and remember we talked about how we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of jesus christ the kingdom of light of the son of god so through redemption i also belong to a new kingdom or let me put it this way i am the redeemed of the lord so there are things that are applicable to the redeemed which are not applicable to the unredeemed so when i am redeemed you know i i know that my spirit is redeemed i know that my soul is redeemed or my mind will emotions they are redeemed okay uh, my uh, body is redeemed all my possessions are redeemed my family is redeemed you know so the equation has changed now because i am the redeemed of the lord a price has been paid for my freedom now just take for example if tomorrow your neighbor comes to your house and says uh it just starts uh, you know switching off your laptop and you know rolling up the cable and you know uh, sort of packs up your laptop and says i'm taking it to my house would would you be quiet obviously no all of us would revolt we would fight and say how can you come to my house and take my possession it belongs to me now if your neighbor asks the question how how can you say it belongs to you you know if we have a bill or something we might show that or we we have some proof to say this is my laptop i'm using it for whatever you know five years now how can you take my laptop it belongs to me it's the same thing when i say whenever you say i am the redeemed of the lord this is the understanding i belong to god i belong to the kingdom of god and thereby when satan comes to stake claim on anything he tries to stake claim on my health he tries to stake claim on my mental peace he tries to stake claim on my finances i can say hello i am the redeemed of the lord i belong to god i belong to god's kingdom nothing of me belongs to you so you cannot we use the term trespass trespass is when 
my home has a boundary uh, it has a boundary wall if you're coming in come in directly from the gate with permission you cannot you know uh, leap off the wall and come because that's like a thief you are trespassing if you try to enter without permission so when i say i am redeemed that's what it means i completely belong to god you and i completely belong to god our lives belong to god okay so now that we have understood through the blood of jesus the blood speaks of my redemption and every time i bring up the blood the enemy doesn't like it because he understands that you are now part of another kingdom you don't belong to him he cannot play his games with you okay uh and now that you know we've understood what redemption is let us also recognize that as people who are part of a new kingdom there is an authority that we carry okay uh, and this authority this power has been given to those who belong to the kingdom of god believers and you know we we uh, seen jesus say all authority on heaven and earth is mine and i give it to you now <laughs> and so we have authority over sin sickness poverty you know any any action any work of the devil uh, and this is what we call as redemptive authority by virtue of belonging to the kingdom of god through the sacrifice of jesus through the shed blood of jesus i have been given authority so in other words you can say when we go against the devil i go with the authority of the kingdom that i belong to now when let's say i'm just uh, again just a simple example for us to understand if i uh, go to a certain nation there is you know if if they have cleared my visa and all that uh, i still have the backing of the nation that i am from and the permission and the benefits that come from that nation so i go with that authority yeah i do have some authority to you know enter uh, another border because uh, i'm not from nowhere i have the authority of that particular nation okay so in the same way when i go before the devil and you know we were talking right that the enemy likes to taunt and he likes to ask us make us doubt who after all who are you you know that kind of a thing uh, what is your experience what is every time we have doubts like that just tell yourself i have redemptive authority just by virtue of the fact that i belong to the kingdom of god devil i'm coming against you with the authority of the kingdom that i belong to amen so we need that understanding i am redeemed and i carry redemptive authority because i am coming to you from the opposite kingdom you know kingdom of darkness i am coming to you from the kingdom of light and you have no reason to linger around i command you to leave in jesus name because i have redemptive authority so you know uh, uh, in our notes this one statement it's put so beautifully it says everything satan gained through the tree in the garden of eden so through one tree he gained access he lost through the tree on calvary so the lord jesus he paid the price in full and through one man sin came into the world but through one man redemption also came into the world and now those who believe in the lord jesus christ you know we are redeemed and we carry the redemptive authority so the blood of jesus you know we generally just put it as the blood of jesus but when you say the blood of jesus remember understand redemption so this whole thing of redemption comes back to us and that is why the mention of the blood of jesus is like a war cry 
it proclaims of the redemptive authority that you and i carry now when it comes to <coughs> some of these sessions of uh, casting out demons you know believers understand that there is power in the blood of jesus we sing about the blood of jesus but also unfortunately sometimes uh we don't have a deeper understanding of the blood it's just you know we might say uh okay i overcome by the blood of jesus i overcome by the blood of the lamb and there's no understanding of that and so when there's no understanding of that we you know we we don't really gain fully from it from the power of of that word uh, so i mean i i've seen uh, you know once we had gone again you know most of my experiences are mission trips only uh, so one mission trip and it was a session of casting out demons uh, and in that session you know i uh, okay i'm just wondering if okay all right uh, in that session of uh, casting out demons there were good believers there and everyone was when the demons started manifesting i noticed uh, all those believers just started saying blood of jesus blood of jesus blood of jesus as if you know like a continuous chant blood of jesus blood of jesus blood of jesus non stop they were going on with it and i was wondering like okay that's good blood of jesus the mention of the blood of jesus but how is it helpful you know to like chant it constantly uh <clears throat> you see it's good it's really good but if we are just saying blood of jesus blood of jesus blood of jesus to cover up our fear uh then you know it's it, it's not required isn't it uh if we fully understand what the blood has done and we apply the authority on account of it then it is beneficial and useful to simply say blood of jesus blood of jesus may not really be uh necessary okay so yeah let me just stop with that any any thoughts any uh anything to contribute from your side about redemptive authority blood of jesus okay so uh, when we talk about the blood of jesus uh, it's important for us to you know people also say apply the blood so how how do we do it in a practical sense understand what the blood of jesus means and what we have talked about today <clears throat> is redemption but if you go back and study about the blood of jesus there is so much more you know like the blood of abel uh, it speak it speaks a better word than the blood of abel for us so the blood has uh, in that sense uh, set us free justified us uh, like the blood which was applied you know when uh, during the passover when the children of israel they left egypt and moved to find the promised land um it it speaks of our protection because at that time the blood was applied to protect the children of israel so things like that you can study about the blood more and more and uh, with that understanding when we pray the blood apply the blood you know it it really uh, makes a lot of sense and difference okay uh, so sitkenu has a comment here he says same thing happens whenever the demon possessed man manifest just the aunties in the church start shouting blood of jesus okay okay so yeah sitkenu i think they believe in the power of the blood uh, but more than just shouting it like that uh, it's more important to understand it okay D does it make sense sitkenu yes ma'am thank you yeah sure right okay all right so that's about our redemptive authority now let's go to the next one here which is inherited authority okay our authority as the name suggests very easy to understand something that you get by inheritance uh, as sons and daughters so uh, this is to do with us receiving 
authority as an inheritance so colossians 1 and verse 12 maybe somebody can read that for us colossians 1 and 12 please colossians 1 and 12 giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of, of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Okay, Amen. okay. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So, we have a Father and He has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Okay, so you know, that very clearly shows us that we also have a, um, a close relationship with our God and uh, we have received many things. Inheritance involves a lot of things, but one of the things that we have received is the authority just by virtue of inheritance. So when the demons uh, might question us, who are you? How could you, how dare you try to cast me out? We can say, I'm the redeemed of the Lord. You know, I speak the power of the blood of Jesus uh, against you. We, we could come against him through the redemptive authority. We could also simply say, I am a child of God. You know, God is my father. I am a son. I am a daughter. I have inherited. I have inherited. And so I'm coming against you with that authority okay so uh, in this manner you know, just have that understanding that now we are children of god now again the passage from romans 8 verses 16 through 19 uh, 16 and 17 it says the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of god and if children then heirs heirs of god and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. So, not only are we children, but we are also heirs. Okay, heirs means uh, those who will receive the inheritance of the Father. And notice this, joint heirs with Christ. So, the kind of inheritance uh, that is promised to Jesus similar we also have a similar inheritance and when we talk about being an heir in this case you know if we have a natural um, a family and then you know our parents inheritance we're quite proud of that but in this case we are heirs uh, as like a prince and a princess because our father is the king and so when we talk about being heirs, it's beyond our natural uh, understanding of being heirs. No, we are heirs in the kingdom of God and we have the authority of the throne of God backing us up. So when I say I am an heir, you know, and stand as a, a, an heir with authority against Satan, I have the backing of the throne of God. So I carry that kind of an authority as a son and a daughter. So I'm not just a representative of the kingdom. You know, I'm, um, for example, if uh, let's say uh, there is an official uh, meeting in our, in our state and uh, the government calls for people from different institutions to come, uh, and they say, okay, you know, you must send somebody from the management. We can't, our organization cannot send anybody. You know, if it was just a general, okay, there is a ceremony and, uh, you know, some special occasion, uh, anyone can go. Maybe the people uh, in the administration don't have time to go. They say, okay, you go, somebody go, represent. That's different. But if, let's say, the government calls for a meeting and you want to send somebody with authority, you would send, you know, maybe your CEO or the vice president or the chairman or someone goes there, not just a representative, but somebody with authority. You represent the authority of the institution that you 
come from. So in the same way, when I go before Satan, it's not like, oh, somebody from the kingdom has come. It's not like that. But I'm standing as a son and a daughter. Think of yourself as a prince or a princess with the backing of the throne of God as an heir of the kingdom with the authority of the kingdom, princely authority, you know, authority of an heir. You're telling Satan, you can't do this. I come as a, and I come with inherited authority. Okay, so all right, class, let's just uh, take a break now, 10 minutes, and let's come back at 11 a.m. and we will complete the rest of the uh, sections here. Okay, all right, thank you.